Sure shot, baby. Good day, everyone. We're here for another episode of the DVD show. So for today, we have one of the former UP Fighting Maroons and also Barangay Hinebra San Miguel for one conference when they won their first championship with Justin Brownlee, as everyone knows. And now he's a engineer and a broadcaster for Signal. I'll now welcome to the DVD show, Jet Manuel. Thank you for joining me here on my podcast. What's up, bro? Thanks uh, for inviting me, and I'm happy to be here. I'm supporting, yeah. supporting the show. Yeah, thank you so much again. And Tempest, to start things off, it's the uh, start of the year. It's the first week of the year, and the cases nga pinag-usapan natin kanina medyo tumataas ulit, and we're just at home majority of the time. I mean, for you, you have work, but majority of the time, you just try to stay at home. So how have you been? How has your family been? How's work also for you? Uh, well, we're fine. The family, thankfully. Uh, well, thank God. We're okay naman. We're safe. We're healthy. Um, no, uh, COVID has, uh, knock on wood, COVID has not reached our doorstep. Pa naman, uh, we're safe. So I'm thankful for that talaga. Um, work side, busy. Uh, I think the pandemic has hit a lot of you know, indus- industries and businesses hard. And we're one of them. So I mean, we're I, I'm happy that we're still alive, we're surviving, we're just trying to get through this uh, tough time. But um, eh, so far, yun. I, I think. Uh, and aside from that, yung I media media stuff ko. Um, TV Five has been good to me. Um, uh, NBA.com has been good to me too. Oh yeah, uh, NBA. Yeah, yeah uh, yun, I'm, I'm blessed rin naman. I have opportunities to still be in touch with um, basketball. Uh, even though I retired, na. and yeah, and so covering PB games, um, doing the game, the, the show at night, uh, tapos, yeah, and so writing some crazy articles that I don't know if people would want to read. <laughs> <and be done. laughs> yeah, and yun nga, yung work mo, mohang strenuous and grueling, and sinasay mo, kay ano, yung sa pandemic, medyo malaki yung effect sa uh, industry nyo, pero. For you, how do you still uh, balance it? I mean, syempre, mas busy ka na nga ngayon. And I think lumuwag na ng konti bago nag, nag-surge ulit yung cases. How do you yeah, balance like, yung pagiging engineer and meron ka pa rin on the side na sports? Um, well, it's tough. Uh, same naman. Honestly, these questions are the same as uh, when I was in college um, and in the PBA. It's just uh, time management. I mean, siguro, I would... I would give thanks to the the um, for UP. Uh, my time in UP has uh, taught me a lot about myself and how to manage my time better. I'm not perfect at it. Mm-hmm. I, I would consider it as one of my weaknesses. Pa, I'm not. I don't think I'm really managing my time as good as I'd want to to be the most productive I can be. But with work and um, you know the media stuff. It's it's uh it's easier na um well mas flexible I, I flexible time ko sa work and TV five has been open rin naman with me na yun yan, oh, if okay. I can't attend the game or if I can't attend the show because of work mm. open so it's a good balance naman but again still working on it bro uh, time management is tough. <laughs> yeah I for sure and yung high school nga rin, I was a varsity player and. I used to live far from school, so medyo mahirap din. And mm. I don't know, medyo it's got to getting better naman in college. Kasi siguro nga, di na rin na varsity Pero may orgs pa din nga and stuff to do. So it's still a challenge to improve on it habang tumatanda. Pero yung pagiging engineer mo, I think you did a great initiative nung earlier the pandemic. I saw an article lang. Oh, so what, like can you elaborate on what you did and how did that stem from and how did you continue doing that? Um, well, that I think that you were. I think you're mentioning the quarantine facilities, no? Mm. Yeah. Um, well, during the start of the pandemic, when COVID was a mystery to everybody, um, I've had friends lang that uh, reached out to me. Na yung yeah, they had that project on helping the country in making quarantine facilities. So mm. um, they needed some help. 
uh, some logistical support and our comp our family business kasi is into logistics so bulk logistics mm-hmm. so big trucks basically so ayun and uh ako naman personally i never turned down an opportunity to help the country or uh, whatever way i can na you know to my power i can help so openly i offered whatever i could which were the logistical support nga for the construction equipment and yeah now I, I honestly bro i didn't expect it naman to gain any traction or anything it's just me i know trying to help a friend that was calling me na kailangan ng tulong sa logistics so yun i'm glad to be a part of it i didn't do it naman for any recognition um i just wanted to help the country solve whatever at that time we didn't even know what covid was about eh. so oh yeah, happy vaccines happy. yeah dude so i'm happy yeah. na as part of that oh yeah that's a great initiative you had and i honestly forgot about it medyo matagal na magto two years na yata lang ayun pero when i was looking for it kanina nung sa spin nakita ko nga yung article so yeah that's a really great one pero yung pagiging engineer mo nga that people might not uh, know about is you know, siyempre basketball player ka pa din. So, yun sa pagiging engineer mo, are there certain aspects or facets of pagiging athlete na nadadala mo rin sa engineering? Like, siguro yun, yung pagiging uh, selfless and mag-teamwork in, uh, in that industry. What are other things, siguro, that you could bring in the engineering industry? Um, Siguro, I, I, I can't really answer sa engineering world. Um. I think lang na the, the what I could say is the discipline siguro that I learned during college and what what I studied and how I yun nga, my manage my time. I think um, being in sports then kasi um, I'm sure you, you can relate na it entails a lot of discipline. It's optional mm-hmm. naman eh. We're not required to be varsity players. We're yeah. not required to play and represent the school. Yeah. Diba? So it taught me the value lang of Um, being disciplined about something I'm passionate about, I was super passionate about basketball. I still am, and I think that in itself, you know, that's what, parang made me or translated directly towards my work. So you know, engineering, um, I am in technically in the construction industry, mm-hmm. and yun, yung discipline na yun, na what what I did or what I went through nung Um, I was playing basketball. I translated it well into work. Na you know, I have to wake up early. Mm. I have to uh, learn. I have to do extra work. So the extra work on basketball, extra work on my own. So work. Na yeah, I, yeah. So I have to do so whatever work I need to do. Um, I think yun, that's really what I valued. Na playing basketball, playing for college. Um, and then yun, figuring out na I'm passionate about something. All out na ako, di ba? In discipline, everything. So, the, val- the the passion I had for basketball, I tried to turn it na passionate about whatever I'm building, whatever work I'm doing now. So, I think that's the most na, na translate. Mm, uh, that's a really great trait na nakukuha ng mga athletes talaga. So, mabuti na apply mo yun sa pagiging engineer mo din and in the construction industry. Pero for an athlete, like, alam mo naman, like, yung uh, foundation or yung upbringing nila sobrang important din to how you are, like, yung pagiging successful mga new P and then now in your professional career. So, to to move forward, I wanted to ask lang uh, yung upbringing mo and childhood, kung paano ka nag-umpisa, like, siguro sa pagiging athlete muna and how you fell in love with basketball was it like actually your first love or did you try other things before succeeding in as a basketball player oh dude okay so ano ba yung basketball ko started late i wasn't uh, one of those guys na you know pagka 2 years old pa lang may basketball na sa oh. kamay ko diba i wasn't like that my my dad played but he wasn't like high level he liked mm. basketball also Um, I did try different sports. So my parents were supportive lang in whatever I wanted to try. I did shit. I can I can I curse here, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I did, uh, I did uh, football, I did uh, taekwondo, which mm. I gave up after one session. My mom was still mad at me. 
for 12. Eh. And then I stopped after. <laughs> uh, what else did I try? Uh, some different sports. And then I did my basketball nga when I was ano pa, when I was young. Milo best pa. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah, I didn't stick. So that was like early grade school. And then parang um, like start ako mag basketball parang grade 5 yata, grade 6. Na parang trip lang. nag out lang kami ng mga <laughs> Oh, nagayaan. Yung mga ganun sa school. Sa Savior, may mm. tryout. So, yun. Nag-tryout kami. And then, lo and behold, natanggap ako sa parang training pool at that time for Savior, yung mga bata. And then, yun. Doon na nag-spark. Parang, na-realize ko, shit, sa ang saya maglaro ng basketball. Um, mm. That's, I think that's where it began. But, dude, I sucked, ah. I sucked yeah. five. I sucked grade six, I think. I sucked pa. Pero, yeah, eventually, I, I I fell in love with the sport and I wanted to get better. Yeah, so yung sinasabi mo na you weren't good at first. So, paano ka gumaling? Like, was it, yung, laro ka lang ng laro? Like, parang street ball ba? Or naglalaro ka sa village? Or kalaro mo si Waki siguro? How was it like? <laughs> well, si Waki noon, football pa siya noon. So, oh, and he was he's eight years younger than me. So, wala. Oh. Hindi ko pwede makalaro yun. Oh. Um, when I started... Um, actually, tumatakas. A funny story, tumatakas pa ako sa parents ko. Kasi my mom just wanted me to study. Gusto niya mm. maging student ako, the value of education. Eh. Tumatakas pa ako sa mga games ko. Until, fast forward, she found out. Um, and then my dad also found out. And then my dad was actually the one that really like, supported me. I don't know kung kinausap niya si mom kasi bumigay na lang siya. Um, yun, that's where it, I think the, ano, the progression started. Whatever, yung dad ko kasi laking probinsya So, mm. yung mga, yung mga old head knowledge ng province, mm. binigay niya sa akin. And then, he taught me lang the value of hard work. So, talagang, he really told me, he brought me to the courts ng weekend. Sa may court kasi sa likod ng bahay namin dati, in a small village in Tagnasora, QC. Uh, um, he brought me there. Yung cemento lang. Mm. Then mag-shooting kami doon sa tapat lang. Yung tapat lang ng ring, mga 100 shots, ganyan. Yung mm. normal, classic dad moves. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, and then, yun, he taught me na, if you wanna be good, you have to, para outwork, technically outwork everyone. So, mm. shooting ka every day. Every day, shooting. So, that's what I did. Kahit nga sa bahay, yung mga, hindi pa scientific ang training nun. Like, we bought me a, a small medicine ball sa kama ko. Mm. I, ano, yung shooting form ako para lumakas yung pulso ko. Di ba yung mga ganyan? Mm. Lumakas yung pulso mo, mas madaling tumira. So I did that every night. And then, um, may activate pa siyang binili sa akin. He made me wear it to school. So I would go oh, to school okay. with fucking ankle weights and then oh. Lord, walk around it. Yeah, it was crazy. So, yun. But the most talaga is he really told me, work at it. If you, if you mm. wanna commit yourself to this sport. Work on it. As in, hindi, hindi ka pwedeng mentality-wise, you can't think na sasali ka lang for fun. If you're gonna commit to be a basketball player, magpa-varsity ka, do it na the best talaga na kaya mo. Squeeze out everything na kaya mo and then you won't regret in the future mm. where you reach. As in, you work na hard. So yun, I did it. I did it, man. Like, I would go to school on Saturday morning, Sunday mornings, um, I would go to 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 Xavier. Tapos after training, extra work, extra work, and then it just stuck with me until, yun. I think nagbloom ako nung high school na yun. So then I think then nakik yun parang ganon. Yeah, and you sa Xavier nga, madaming mga players dun na magagaling na nag PBA and UAP and then CAA din. And yun nga sinasabi mo na you dun ka nag-start na gumaling in the high school level. So, how when did you, re, uh, sorry, when did you realize that and like how, was it like in a game or was it in a span of months wherein you were succeeding na talagang feeling mo, ah, yun na breakthrough moment ko na I should continue it until collegiate level and PBA then? Um, I'd say, I know, uh, my second year in high school, uh, siguro throughout the league, Kasi yung mga previous years, I was playing well na. I'd, I'd say I was playing well. Um, like, pero puro team B lang ako or team C. So I was like, siguro the, the better half of that 
team C pero not good enough oh. for team A di ba? yun nga yung okay sa savior ang daming team yeah. um, but second year high school uh, na, na pick ako 15th nga ako eh parang may suspense pa I was a, mm. you know when they call the lineup 1, 2, mm. 3, 4 ganyan yeah. 14 na hindi pa ako tinatawag so parang sabi ko shit mong eh, wala na ako sa team ngayon team B lang mm. pero 15th pinagbigyan ako Uh, for, yeah, for Pasarel. That was ah, okay. the Pasarel. Oh. And then, um, yun, that second year, I played out of my mind. Like, I was, I think dun nga nag-kick in na uh, may hard work, tuloy-tuloy pa in hard work. And then the situation I was in, siguro, with Coach Lito Bergara pa, he gave me the opportunities. He saw something in me, I don't know. And then, yun, that whole season, I was really playing well. I was playing, we were winning, and then I hit I, I hit the game-winning shot in finals namin against Ateneo. So that was the biggest shot. It still is the biggest shot of my career. Uh, mm. Because that, I'd say, was the moment na na feel ko. Parang, parang pucha, I love you this. You can stretch. compete. Yeah, <laughs> I can compete. This is against Ateneo, defending Manila mm. champions. Mm. I made the game-winner. Uh, I I played well, so yon. I think that was the moment na I'm gonna I'm gonna take this. Ano na? Parang I wanna I wanna see how far I go. Yon. I think that was the biggest moment for me. Oh, at that time nga na yon, nakita naman ng mga tao na nag nag work yung yung mga numerous hours mo sa gym na nag work out and nag work on your shooting and everything. Pero was there a time at a young age, siguro na you felt na baka yung hard work mo naman, hindi naman pupunta sa results na gusto mo na mag UAAP or PBA and then you were thinking na, oh, why am I even working, kumari, five hours a day? Eh, Malay mo, wala rin naman mangyari. So, it's useless, basically. So, was there a time like that and what prompted it to change eventually? Um, uh, I guess, I, I can't say na there was a time. I mean, there are times, of course, that I got discouraged. Parang mm-hmm. who has it, diba? You play a bad game. Um, siguro, two points lang ako or four points lang ako tapos talo pa yung team. Mm-hmm. Okay, in those times, it's natural na I get discouraged. But I don't think... I, I, I think I'd be confident to say na during that time nung bata ako, nung nasa high school, uh, not once did I tell myself na parang mag-give up na ako. I think it was just a personality in me or yung nga, mga values na tinuro ng parents ko na... Kasi... I, th- I think that's the beauty of it, Ren, ano, Diego, na there wasn't any expectation. Hmm. Uh, my parents weren't PBA players. So, hmm. I mean, that wasn't, diba? So, there wasn't an expectation yeah. na Jet Manuel will or should make it in the yeah. way. Or Jet Manuel should be a PBA player. So, I never had that expectation. So, for me, my whole mentality was just, just work as hard as I can. So, wherever I end up, kahit na I don't make it into college, kahit na I don't make it in the PBA, I have goals, of course, I set goals for myself. But even if I don't make it, I won't regret na I didn't make it. Sayang, what if, parang yung mga what if, what if nag-extra shooting ako nung araw na to? What mm-hmm. if I put in more time to um, work on my dribbling? What if I put in more time to um, parang yung nga, shoot trees or shoot free throws? So that was my whole mentality. I was just telling myself, I will not reach a point in the future where I will say, what if I did extra work? So mm. wherever it takes me, that's it. But I will, mm. I'll tell myself I did everything I could. So yun, to answer your question, yun, parang siguro ganun nga. That was my mentality that back then. Oh, that's really great. And naririnig ko yan sa madaming mga players din sa PBA and NBA. Like when they get interviewed sa mga podcasts, like favorite nila si Kobe like feeling nila nag nagwo-work na sila ng hard tapos pakita nila si Kobe kung mara sa Team USA like Olympic training nandoon na pala siya tapos na siya yeah, I'm, I'm a Kobe fan and so I know it, all the stories <laughs> yeah. favorite ko yun yung mga nakikinig lang ng mga ganun when I have nothing to do or even when I'm doing something I'm just listening to stuff like that so yeah that's that's why I can I can like you know relate to what you're saying But then, yeah, moving on nga to your savior high school career, tuloy, tuloy yun, and then you reached UP. Before um, college, were there other schools that tried getting you from, save, from savior? Oh, uh, no. 
lol. Um, I wasn't highly recruited. <laughs> so, uh, UP was the strongest na they actually set a meeting with my dad and me oh. and it, um, Coach Aboy Castro did. Um, but other schools, no, I tried out. I did. Because, syempre, yung mga, alam mo naman tayo, pagka nasa high school, the goal is Ateneo or Lasal. Eh. Oh. Diba? Eh, yung time, yung time ko, uh, I don't know with you, my time ko, when I was in high school, I was watching the likes of Chris Chu, Joseph Yo. Yeah. Diba? Yung ma-idol ko na si Evier na nag-Ateneo or Lasal. So, in yeah. my mind, that's the goal. That's where I want to mm-hmm. go. So when UP was recruiting me, I said, I don't want, I don't want UP. I want, I want La Salle or Ateneo, right? Oh. So I tried out. Um, I went to the practices, but I wasn't picked. Um, they were recruited in Sarili. Um, I heard from my dad after after me playing in UP. They were recruited by the coach Pido in USD, but I didn't get it. So so uh, I I'd say USD. Um, Coach Ato um, of, of San Beda mm. uh, told me uh, he's interested for me to go to San Beda but uh, my mom and, and my parents didn't want they wanted me you know either UP a big three the usual naman sa parents so mm-hmm. UP I think really was the, the main um, team or school that, that really gave an effort to recruit me And since now nga engineer ka, was it also related na nag na gusto mo mag-UP dahil engineer or wala yun? It was just a coincidence. <laughs> no, it really was. Um, oh, okay. Chronologically, uh, UP recruited me before I even knew what course I wanted. Oh, okay. um, and then, yeah, it was like during a tune-up game in fourth year. Uh, confused pa ako in what I wanted to take up. Pero mm-hmm. when I did decide before I graduated, I mean, during the school year said parang gusto ko maging civil engineer syempre ang top 2 na titingnan ko is Lasal and UP yeah so ateneo kasi walang engineering mm. may management engineering sila but that's like super hero and <laughs> ano so, oh, hero. so uh, and walang license so i told myself oh. i want to get, get a engineering license so it was either Lasal or UP but Lasal again didn't get me team B lang mm. daw eh, mm-hmm. alam naman natin yung story, mahirap maging Team B, tapos uh-huh. maging Team B. So, uh-huh. UP, it was connected. Na I justified it to myself na ito na nga, may opportunity na ako maging one varsity player for a UAAP team. Wasn't the best. It was, uh, at that time, it's actually the worst uh, team. But, mm-hmm. the value nga ng mom ko na sinasabi, may education kayo. You have a, mm-hmm. uh, scholarship to take up um, the education you want. So, mm. eventually, connected siya. I chose UP. Mm. And you, you mentioned nga a lot about your parents. And sa NBA, madami rin yung mga players dun na minsan nagkakagulo sila. Like, kumara, si Kevin Porter Jr. Baha nga now he has, like, issues, like, mentally <laughs> or with his, you know, upbringing. Ganun. Kaya, syempre, doon na-affect yung ano niya, di ba? Yung, the way he acts now. Like, he threw food at the Exactly yeah. in Cleveland before, di ba? Kaya siya nawala doon. <laughs> like, medyo wild yung mga ibang stories sa US naman. Pero kasi, like, you mentioned your parents nga a lot and yung support system, I think super crucial yun sa isang um, career ng athlete. And for you, I'm pretty sure if hindi solid yung support system, it could have gone haywire at any point. Pero for you, parang at every uh, milestone, let's say, or part of your life parang in every big decision they were there to guide you so how would you explain like the massive importance of that and especially like kahit tumatanda ka na parang you still uh, get their advice and they're still there to help you lalo na sa athletes like yun nga yung mga ibang decisions lalo na pag pera medyo you know it's difficult <laughs> uh, dude uh, right on the nail you, um, I think um, one of the or I think the most important thing for an athlete is the support system. Actually, mm-hmm. yeah, not even an athlete. I mean, mas kita athlete, pero uh-huh. as a person, really a solid support system. I was blessed lang talaga. I'm thankful naman talaga, and I'm grateful until this day that my parents were who they are. Um, mm-hmm. I had them. They were supporting me since day one. Uh, eh, parang yung, the fact na, na whatever sport I wanted, 
binayaran oh, pa rin yeah. diba? uh, mm. support me um, but yun nga it's it's hard eh the life of an athlete is hard especially high level the higher level it is the harder talaga it is mentally mm. um, so yung mga times na there are multiple multiple times I would go home crying from a UP game um, frustrated sad Every, especially my first year, I was out of high school. And then, yeah, support system goes there. My my brothers were there, my cousin, my girlfriend pa. Um, they were always there na my friends. So, I think sobrang laking bagay na you have people to go to na ano, sad ka, yak ka sa afternoon game, pero afternoon, sasabihan ka lang ng tatay mo na parang, ano gusto mo, cheesecake, ice cream? Ano yung mga ganun? Mm-hmm. Uh, those little things are ga, it, it, I wouldn't be here or I wouldn't have gone through what I went through if wala sila. Mm, yun nga, like, some of my guests din na uh, nakausap ko, like, sila Aaron Black, di ba? Like, they had great support system din. Si Aaron, like, kumari nung uh, tough times in Ateneo, you know, Norm, Coach Norman was there though, to help him. Kasi, di ba, si Diego Dario din, yun, they had a great support system na they elaborated on it also and discussed it here on the podcast. Kaya, it's really great na yung mga athletes ano yun, grabe yung focus nila sa support system nila and, you know, gratefulness nila in that. So, yun, yun nga sa UP, you mentioned na, na you were crying a lot. So, for sure, kasi nga, ang daming ang talo yun nga si Simon. They were one of the worst teams during Zero for team, bro. My oh, God. Out of yeah. high school. Out of high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yun, yun, UP naman. I mean, it was kind of tough already in the losing. Tapos yung coaches nyo pa, uh, iba, iba. Like, there was a time that two pa yata yung coaches. Yeah, I was so confused. I was like, what's going on here? Until si Coach Bo. I mean, before that, talagang I don't even memorize anymore kung sino yung coaches, what season. Ganun. Usually, alam ko yun. Pero I actually kind of forgot na for UP. So, in, I mean, it's Xavier. You guys were pretty good. You guys would win tournaments, I'm pretty sure, in games. Yeah. So, gano'ng kahirap yun for you? I mean, I, just to elaborate, para ma-justify naman yung pag-iyak ko, ah. Hmm. You come from uh, you come from Xavier, na I mean, whatever high school program that's successful, I would say Xavier was successful. Hmm. We we're champions. I was hmm. playing well. I was the back I I was really playing well at my fourth year. Tapos na nalo kami na nalo. So di di talaga sa nai matalo during that time. Hmm. And napat pa tao sa UP. Sure, idealistic pa ako nun. No, I'm here. I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change the culture. I'm gonna, hmm. I'm gonna turn UP into a winning team. Ano pa ako eh? Bulag pa ako na bata eh. Hmm. I'm gonna turn UP into a 0-14 team to a contender in the final hmm. four. Uh, eh, hindi nangyari. Eh, apparently, hmm. ibang pa pala yung college basketball. Hindi already. So, upak ako. And hmm. then, upak na, ako, upak na ako physically. Upak pa ako mentally. Kasi, hmm. game after game after zero. 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 Hmm. Zero. So my mind was like, what the hell? What did I do? Why the hell did oh. I go? Why the, why the hell did I go to UP? Tapos yun nga, sakto. That year, second game pa lang, pinalitan na yung coach na nag-recruit sa akin. So, oh. di ba? From Coach Aboy, it became Coach... Um, ang pangalan mo ito? Uh, was it si Boyet. you foreigner? No, it became Coach Boyet. Her ah, okay. Over Midway. Eh nangyari yun. Hindi niya ako trip na play, hindi siya nag hindi, hindi siya nag-recruit sa akin. <laughs> Iba nga yun niya. Oh, sa games na naglalaro ako, bangko na ako. Bangko na ako, talo pa kami. So wala, iyak na lang ako sa iyak. It was hard man, it was really hard that first year. <laughs> but then when did you eventually, I don't know, I mean, from an outsider's point of view, syempre yung tinaryo niya tayong Ateneo that was when you saw there was hope. I think you won five, five games that yeah, season. Yeah, last the, my last season. Yeah. Yeah. So for you, was it that the, your last season? Na talagang you were, I know, you know, your mood mo nag change, or was it earlier pa when you know you were seeing there were hopes of UP finally uh, up, upending their standings in the UAP? Uh well, to be honest, um, uh, after my first year, so I went to the second year. Sure. In one year, me two coaches na ako. Mm. Pagpasok ng second year ko, may bago na naman coach. Coach uh, uh, Ricky Dandan. So I had okay. three coaches in two years. You know, who other player 
can say that. Anyway, um, so Coach Rick, he, uh gave me a shot. Like he, he like I, I didn't stop it. I just kept working. Uh, yun nga, may, may support system was there. I just kept working. Second year ago, I played well. I, I really I played well. Um, in UP, I won the most uh among most improved player. The mm, second. Okay. So that's when I felt na shit, I belong here. Um, I can play with the best. I, that was against Sila Bob Yuri Park spot at that time. Mm. I was scoring well. I was playing well. So, you know, I didn't really stop. But we weren't winning. We were 2 I, two twelve yata that year. Mm. The third year wasn't so good. Naman. So, um, my story was I took a leave. I trained in the States. My, my, my dad... Um, hooked me up. He paid for everything. He brought me to the States. Uh, he wanted to support my dreams. So I took a leave from school. I trained in the States. When I got back, um, I took another leave. I played in D-League, in the D-League to try to get better. And then I would say, to answer your question, fourth year. I came in, I came in, coach, uh, was, I think it was Dan Palami that time. I saw the support mm. change. The management changed. We had food after games. We had an air conditioned bus going to the arenas. And then I felt the, I, I saw the potential with the players. So I think it was fourth year. I felt I was good enough. Na rin. I, I, I got a lot better. So I think the pieces around me, fourth year, I feel ko na parang ina. And then si Paul, ne, si na Paul, uh, and then mm. na namin. So parang, si, sabi ko, I think. Maganda yung kapupuntahan nito. So, fourth year to fifth year, very, very positive. I had hope talaga na we could mm-hmm. do something. Yung curious ako, was the initiative to train abroad? Like, not everyone had have that initiative and, you know, would be willing to go there, stop school, and have, I don't know how many months you were there. Maybe a re- pretty long time. So, saan naggala yung initiative na yun? And ano yung mga nat nadala mo sa UP in your fourth and fifth year na siguro hindi mo never mo na experience yun dito sa Philippines. Siyempre, ba yung style nila uh, mentoring young youngsters there? Um, I stayed there for ano, five and a half months. So, ito sa training, siyempre, training camp yun, Indiana hmm. and Las Vegas. Um, again, support system. My dad paid for everything. It wasn't sponsored by the school. Uh, hmm. A personal thing na my dad really wanted me to squeeze out everything again to say mm-hmm. you know what I regret. Yeah. So um the training there was difficult. No, it was really it, it, there's a reason why Kiefer uh, is a good friend of mine. There's a reason yeah. why Kiefer goes uh went to the state during his college career, he went oh. to the state every year. Maski two weeks yan, maski three weeks, he would go mm-hmm. back all the time to touch up on his skills to train because the training talaga is really different. The disciplines are different. The, the competition is different. Um, how hard the intensity is, it's different. So I really attribute na I got way better when I trained there. I'm not saying it's a secret sauce because you have to mm-hmm. go through the training and do your best. Um, it's not automatic na someone goes there. Automatically, pagbalik sobrang galing hindi. You have to do your part then. So um, I brought back um, what I learned in the States to UP in terms of I kept the anai, I kept the work ethic. I had mm. the skills, but I kept the work ethic. I took down notes, I did the drills by myself, and then I kept going parent. I min multiply yung extra work when I'm not UPO by like zero times three times four. Mm, na, Oh, so the hours I put in, taga, I think that's what I learned in the States. Na she never got it to teammates. Go, na, let's do this drill. Let's do this drill. Parang ganon. So, yun, I think that that I know that really propelled na my career at that time. Yeah, and yung individual growth mo is really commendable for any athlete. Pero I wanted to touch on yung coaches. Like, I don't know if other people that don't play basketball would realize. Like, if you keep changing coaches every season, like Lasal was what fifth place the past two seasons, and it's not like because they're not talented. It's it's because they had a hard time. Like if I ask Sila Andre Karakot, Sila Aljun, like 
I had a hard time. It's a whole new system. And yung sabi mo nga, yung coaches, iba yung gustong rotation pag bago na. So, kung star player ka, biglang sub ka na lang pag ito na yung coach. So, for you, you had three coaches in your early early part of your collegiate career. So, how difficult was that? And how did you manage to adjust your style of play? Um, sino ba? I think Woody ko. Uh, he was oh, my yeah. senior when I was a rookie. And it was a new coach at that year. Sabi, siya nagsabi sa akin na parang uh, as, a, as, a, as a ahia or a kuya to me, mm. he really told me na uh, if you're a player and you're a good player, it doesn't matter what coach is gonna coach you. You adjust to the coach and you show na valuable ka pa rin kahit anong sistema pa yan. Mm. So that really stuck with me. And to give perspective to all the viewers, Um, ganito yan, pagbagong coach. Um, Siyempre, uh, sabihin natin, may, uh, may mga may experience. Uh, may coach ako ngayon, may sistema, may players. Ganyan. May bagong coach na darating. One, you mentioned, iba yung sistema niya. Hmm. So, pag iba yung sistema, kahit masabihin mo, oh, no, it's it's like this, the old coach. Kware, fast-paced. Fast-paced pa rin naman yun. No. Totally different. <laughs> different. You run to different spots. Hmm. Uh, play different rules. Yung positions mo, gobago. Decision making mo, gobago. May adjustment period yan. So that's one. Two, because of the new system, because of the new rules, iba rin ang, ano, iba rin ang lineup, iba rin ang rotation na ilalagay niya. Kasi certain players will fit certain rules. Eh, eh ibang-iba na yung rules. So iba na naman yung system. So ako, as a player, iba yung system, iba yung rules. Iba na yung mga kasama ko sa court. And iba na yung pinaggagawa nila sa court na <laughs> na nandoon sila. So, may daming iniisip. Tapos, mm. not just on offense, on defense also. Iba na yung mm. ano, sabihin natin, three years na, you, you can talk basketball naman, Diego. So, three years, yeah. ano tayo, full court press. Oh. So, nasa mo, habit mo na na talagang one arm length away ka from your defender. Oh. Or, diba? Tapos, pinipressure mo ganyan. Tapos, biglang itong bago, sabihin na, ang ginagawa mo, hindi ka dapat nag-pressure. Dapat two arms length lang. Just stay in front. Just stay in front. Mm-hmm. So, syempre, you're fighting habits. Mahirap yeah, yeah, yeah. Mahirap. And I went through that. I had three coaches in my first two years. Coach Ricky stayed in my fourth. Coach, uh, a new coach came in the, the fourth year, which I, I didn't play. When I came back, it was Coach, uh, what's this? Bo? Coach Joe Hart and Coach Renzi. I'm Joe. Uh, oh, okay. Different na naman. Pressure, uh-huh. pressure. And then the next year, si Coach Bo Perasol naman. Ayun, so, Bo, siya, yeah. Balyo na balyo na ako. Hindi <laughs> ko na alam kung anong pinaggagawa ako. Iba na naman, uh-huh. iba na naman. But, yun nga, sabi nga ni Woody, that's what kept the ego going lang. If you're a good player, you show your value. No matter what system, what ano, find the role na hinahanap niya and then you fill it. Mm-hmm. Para gamitin ka. Ayun, sakto. Yes. Nagkakampu kami ni Coach Bo nung last year ko. So, Maayos talaga. Pero may hirap, may hirap talaga. <laughs> yeah, yun nga si, what do you call this? Si NBA, di ba? Kung mara, yung Lakers. I think you're a Laker fan. Like, si Frank Vogel, yung scapegoat. Or si Westbrook, actually. Yeah. Si West Vogel. Pero like, they have 82 games. I mean, they're not even halfway now. It's a UAAP, di ba? 16 Thank games. Thank you. Lang. Thank you. <laughs> so, para, paano pa kaya? And, di ba, kung mara, you prepare how many months for what, three months of the season? So, kung sa gitna ng year, tatagay yung coach. Paano, paano ko kaya makaka-adjust? Yeah. Sayang yung seven Laker months. Fan. Laker fan. Laker? No, I'm Celtics nga. Eh. Ah, okay, well, I wanna go off this podcast. Ah, but... <laughs> <laughs> yung ka sabi yung mga yung ba tao dito, like si Wesley Gonzalez, parang yung interview him. He said, why am I here? Like, kasi hindi ba atin na yun siya? Oh. <laughs> Nasala ko. <laughs> Alice na daw siya. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, yun sa coaches nga. Siyempre, I think you mentioned nga si Coach Bo yung nag-flourish ka. And what made you flourish nga under him? Was it because he's like, he gave you the ball handling responsibilities and he found your strengths, like how he did with Paul, with Juan, and eventually all the, you know, ball-dominant players that are scorers. Kasi yun yung parang nakita ko with UP eh. Like si Mikey Reyes nga and his, I watch a lot of his videos. Palagi niya niloloko na siya daw buhaw kasi daw they had no choice. But then, it's not necessarily because he was, you know, yeah. the good kind. Like, you know, sila Kung one. Kung makita nito, 
may choice siya. Pero buha ko lang talaga siya. Ano man yung buhay ito? Buha ko talaga si Mikey Reyes. Mikey Reyes. Buha ko talaga. Wala ka, ano wala kang choice? May choice ka. Buha ko ka lang choice. Okay, say it. Ito rin mo. No, but no. no. Okay, so I, I get your point naman. But uh, I flourish with Coach Bo kasi uh, siya, ano siya eh, sa player's coach eh. May term na gano'n eh, sa player's coach. He's not, may mga, ano na, hindi player coach, na whatever they want, you have to follow. Yung mga France pumarin, yan, mga gano'n. Susunod ka. Si Coach Tap. Di ba? Okay. Wala si Pake, kung sino ka. Uh-huh. We follow my system. Coach Bo naman, his style of coaching was more of being a player's coach. Na mm-hmm. very, ang ganda ng samahan namin ni Coach Bo eh. So, ang ganda ng communication namin. Um, before the season, he expressed to me his goals, his... Uh, what he wants from me, ganyan. And then he asks me, na, what do you think? What do you think about this? What do you think about this? So I really felt involved with him. Na parang ganon siya naging coach. When I was on the court, um, it gave me more confidence. Siguro nagkatagpo lang. Kasi there are really different types of coaches for different types of players. Eh. So nag, uh, swak kami ni Coach Bo in terms of I understood what he wanted and he understood me as a player na, oh, kasi aminin ko rin naman, may pagkabuha ko rin naman ako, kasi <laughs> kailangan eh, di ba? And I felt na, he trusted me with that, na I made more decisions on the court, and it turned out well. It turned out well for us. So I think kaya ako nag-flourish, kasi nagkatagpo lang yung style ni Coach Bo, and the style of me as a player. Yeah, and yun na, that's great for Coach Bo, because you know, like Paul also, like what if it was not Coach Bo, you never know if he would have been the same impact and value in the UP team. But then for you, nung mga latter year nga, latter years, dun mas mas na ano ka ba? Parang fulfilled ka na you really stayed, because you could have easily siguro left and you know went to another school and baka mas maayos yung system, but dun kaisa sa UP nung time na palit sila ng palit ng coaches. Pero siguro nung latter year when They, you you found your niche and you found your role kasi nga maganda yung communication mo with the coaching staff was it were, were you being more happy now or you know being optimistic on the role given to you kasi you were already scoring and you know it was leading to a certain amount of wins yeah uh, I think it showed nga um, yung time ko kasi hindi pa uso yung as 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 crazy at is, as it is now na ang daming lumilipat na player. It wasn't that mm. crazy for eh, in my time in, U, in UAP, in UP. Um, but parang I, I I can say naman na with like straight face na I never thought of leaving UP. Mm. Parang one, uh, of course, yung education ko. But mm. two, parang when I stepped into it and when I felt naman na Yeah, and uh, naging dugong maroon talaga ako eh. And mm. I really told myself, I'm gonna give everything I have for UP. I mm. never thought about going to Ateneo, kahit ang dream ko before, I go into La Salle, um, better programs just for basketball. No, parang I felt the love eh. I felt the love, I felt uh, yung UP community, kahit na bilang lang yung nanonood nung start ng uh, UP career ko. Um, mm. Parang ngayon, I never thought about Uh, leaving and you know, trying to find more wins somewhere else. So whatever it may at that time, whatever it, anong kalalabasan niya, whatever record, bibigay ko ng lahat sa UP. Kasi ang dami, laki na rin ang binigay sa akin. And mm-hmm. um, yun, I think the source of fulfillment ko was playing for UP. Mm-hmm. Para yun lang talaga. Uh, I was fulfilled enough na kahit pa paano may nasimulan ako nung last two years ko na it was always like, eh, lahat ng interviews ko during that time I remember saying that it's always for the UP community it's for UP it's for UP hindi mm-hmm. para sa amin hindi para sa team ganyan yeah and yun nga you mentioned that in the last two years it was a great stepping stone to the success of UP now and do you think it was also um, a reason that they recruited players or they brought players that were not lo- used used to losing like I heard Mikey Ata say that in his One of his episodes this week or last week, na they got like Juan, June Manzo, Bright. I mean, these players would win in their previous schools. Like Bright was successful in Perpetual, June in Visayas. So, 
do you think that was main reason and why you know these players would really not want to lose? Hindi na sila sanay dun sa you know zero and fourteen or two and twelve na sinasabi mo kanina. I think at that time rin kasi wala na yung losing culture mm. nung pumasok sila. Si June kasi naging medyo, naging medyo close kami nung nasa, he's serving as residency. Yeah. Um, we used to train a lot together. Tapos lang, dami niya tinatanong. Bata pa siya nun, dami niya tinatanong sa akin. Ganyan, dami niyang. I was really, uh, parang he saw, he witnessed kasi yung before the culture change to after. So during the time na pumasok siya, pumasok na rin si Bright. Juan, mm-hmm. parang wala na eh. There's really a culture of losing kasi or if he felt it during the first half of my UAP career. Or when they came in, uh, yeah, sanay na sila manalo, ayaw nila matalo. Pero nabuo na eh, nabuo na pa rin yung kursunado ng mga bata. When I left, mm-hmm. Paul Edith, Diego was there, sila Jared, mm-hmm. Jero. So, na, ano na eh, na-translate na eh, na winning. So, yun eh, ang ano na lang, ang importante, actually, sinabi ko nga kay... Diego and KJ Elonon before when I left, when I played my last game na um, huwag nyo payagan pumalik pa sa dati. Kasi alam mo rin sila yung dati. Huwag nyo payagan pumalik pa sa dati yung, yung culture na nagawa na natin together. So yun, parang thankful rin naman ako na dire-diretso siya ngayon. It's happy. I'm happy to see it naman. Yeah, and yun nga, yung season 81 was when you mentioned that that was really the year when they reached the finals and and they were against Adamson. You mentioned Coach France a while ago that he's a very systematic coach na nagtatrap sila lahat. And contrary yun to Coach Bo na players coach. And it was a nip and tuck Final Four series. And I was I wanted UP to win actually because yun nga, they haven't won in so long. It's fun to have someone else yeah. there in the finals. And what do you think was the reason on UP finally... Um, overcoming the hump and beating a team like Adamson that was very ano, methodical and they had the system talaga in place compared to, you know, UP style that you mentioned? Uh, I think what got them over the hump was the, ano na, na I think yun nga, I, I just point out yung culture na. Kasi at, the, at that point in time, ano na rin eh, because of the, the, the change nung last year ko siguro, my fourth year, um, malaki rin yung naging pagbabago sa support. And with the support, of course, in any basketball team, if you have support, you have good players, you have good talent. So, nagtapat-tapat na lahat. Uh, yung talent pool was there. Sila bright? If I had bright, man, oh my God. <laughs> bright, June Manso, si Juan, si Paul. Diba? If, if the talent pool was crazy na eh. So, I, ju- I think it just meshed together. And like you mentioned, because tagal na hindi na nalo, siguro we just wanted it way more. Na nothing to lose kami. Yung mga mm-hmm. ibang contenders, iba kasi when you play, yung ibang contenders, they have something to lose kasi expected sila manalo. UP mm-hmm. from nowhere. So I think it just it just all just came into place. Uh, honestly nga, nakaka-goosebumps nga yung mga fans din ng UP. Like solid yung support kahit sa volleyball nga nung no? time nga nila Tots, Carlos na rin. Both sports, biglang ang dami na. And, yeah. and nag-start na rin sa football din. So it's great that basketball was like, you know, the stepping stone for the UP community to support the teams of UP. Pero yung moving on to that next year, yung season 82, so yun nga, sinasabi mo yung support. Sobrang laki na nung time na to. And that was when they recruited Richie and Kobe. But then, honestly, for you, since from an outsider point, since you're an analyst also, do you think that was that could also be a problem? Like, you know, the 2004 Lakers or the 2012 20, Bayern or 13 when they had yeah. so much, so many superstars. But then, iba pa rin kasi yung pasok sila dapat sa role and they uh, coexist well together. So what, what's your thoughts on why UP lost in the Final Four then against USD? Uh I think we can talk about it naman openly. It's just my opinion. But yeah, yeah. it's a problem. Uh, anyone naman can see eh, na parang there were too much stars in a team. Mm-hmm. On paper, I, was, I, I covered the season. And I, mm-hmm. I said it na naman when I was covering. On paper, UP is the most, was at that time, UP was the most talented team on paper. Kobe, Richie, 
uh, Juan, mm. June, Bright, the second all-star mm. team for college. But mm. in any team sport, having too much stars will always be a problem. And it was for UP. So um, egos, I, I'm not saying makaaway sila, but oh. when you're a player kasi, gusto mo siyempre magpakita, especially in college. Um, sobrang bullshit yung mga, hindi, hindi, I'm for the team, ganyan. Come on, man. Everyone wants to make it to the PBA. You're not gonna yeah. make it to the PBA being for the team, not scoring oh. at the diba? Let's not, mm. let's not, ano, there. Let's not go there. Huh. So, see that time, I think that is a problem. Uh, I think then uh, uh, the talent got them by uh, all their wins. But we all knew na I think when he rapan rin na si Coach Bo kasi was a player's coach. Huh. If you're a player's coach, diba? If you have one star na huh. buha ka tulad ko, ako lang. Okay lang. Kasi mag-isa lang uh-huh. ako eh. Uh-huh. But if you have five at the uh-huh. same time, Mahirap na yun. Mm. So, tapat-tapat lang rin yung situation. Uh, I think, I, I felt like if they had more years together, siguro kung two years sila together, three years sila, um, that would have easily been a championship dynasty team. So, from a coaching side, tingin mo nung season na yun, wala na sila masyadong mababago na major na, you know, could have made them successful. It really needed more of continuity, like, Coach Tab in Ateneo, they lost their first season then, but eventually they found yeah. their rhythm in the next season. Hindi yung instant success. Kasi syempre, yung UP, nung no, nakuha niya yung big names, parang, oh, kailangan mag-champion tayo ngayon, ganun. So, you think iba na talagang... Yun rin, may expectations na rin. Uh, so, it really plays eh. Uh, but, I, that time, no. Mm-hmm. No, no one move na sabihin mo na they should do this na lang instead of this would have made them way better, you know. It would have taken time. It would have taken them to become, mm. you know, to understand each other, team chemistry, mm. adjustment, ganyan. Hey, you know, natin yung Lakers, eh. these guys are pros na. Professionals uh-huh. na ito. Westbrook uh-huh. is a vet. LeBron is a vet. Anthony Davis is a vet. Frank uh-huh. Lowe is an amazing coach. Uh-huh. Pero hirap ko rin sila. Ano ba yung uh-huh. mga bata na college na... <laughs> more. Na- so much uh, more. So much more. Uh-huh. Hmm. And nga, you mentioned now na UP na rin. I think, I don't know if they'll have continuity since first year ni Coach Goldwyn and they have a whole new system. But then since, you know, you still follow their team and I think Coach Bo still has a role there, but I think their core is very different now from that season 82 that you were elaborating on a while ago. But then with, you know, the UP, uh, the NU Bullpups for moving on to UP except Kimbao and CJ Cancino's there and si Ma- uh, Mad- uh, Diop, I forgot his Malik Diop as their uh-huh. natural uh, foreign born athlete in their team. Do you think they could com- do you think this team has the potential to you know compete with Ateneo? I mean I'm just gonna say Ateneo because <laughs> three feet and their team still looks strong for the upcoming season despite not having the white. <laughs> uh Compete, yeah. I mean, subjective yung compete. But, I mean, straight up, right now, at this point in time, ha, I'm going to mm-hmm. say no. They're not going to win against Ateneo. Especially if Kwam, Anj Kwam is still there, if, if Coach Tab is still there. Mm-hmm. Ateneo, by far, right now, is the best team in college uh, basketball in mm-hmm. the Philippines. So, yeah, I can't say that. But, um, UP in itself, will still be a winning team. Mm. Yeah, he says Coach Goldwyn is a great guy. I'm really, I, I'm friends with, uh, I'm really friends with Coach Goldwyn. Uh, we competed a lot of times in high school and I know him personally. He's a great coach talaga. Great mentor. Magaling talaga siya na coach. That I can say. The talent mm. he has, magaling. Magagaling na yung mga bata on this belt. It's not like before. Plus the support. Coach Bo still there. The, the financial support still there. So, Barring uh, no, everything is happening with COVID, magaling pa rin ang UP. So excited pa rin ako. Excited pa rin ako. Yeah. Well, speaking of winning, you moved on to the PBA na, I think, 2017 or 16. Yung kasabay mo si Kiefer in the draft, right? Kiefer, Jerome. Yeah. 17, I think. 
December 2017. Yeah, you were with Sila Kiefer, Jeron, Stan Hardinger. Was he in that draft? Yeah, Stan Hardinger, number one draft. Yeah, Christian Stan Hardinger. Yun yung malakas yung draft class niya yun. And speaking of winning from UP in the last few years, yun, pumunta ka sa franchise na may expectations <laughs> to win like every game. Pag natalo sila, parang Twitter explodes. And I'm a, you know, huge Ginebra fan ever since the Kagiwa Helter Brand days and the days I can remember nung bata pa ako nun. Pero entering Ginebra, like in the draft pa lang, What was your feeling like? Did you really think that you were gonna go to Hinebra? Like, did you have that inkling already through the draft combine or your interviews that you were gonna land in Hinebra? And, of course, pressure and expectations matas with Coach Tim. <laughs> ah no! What the hell? Uh, oh, I think the first thing I did not expect to go to Hinebra. <laughs> the story of the draft was, what? Ano eh, one to, what? Ano um, twelve, twelve teams, right? Diba? Uh, so. I was projected, and there are projections on eh. So I was projected to be, I think, number five. Parang five, six. There are projections. Oh, seven. Yeah, yeah. Because it's Christian, Kiefer, Jeremy, si Perkins, I think. Perkins was there. Yeah. Si Rimar Jose was there. Si Potts yeah. was yeah. there also. So a lot of draft class. Uh-huh. But yeah, there are draft projections. So there mid, mid first. Tapos Louis was in draft, I was like, what the hell? I'm going to the second round. And then, I saw that the ano, Ginebra was next. I was like, Asa, no analyst, no coach, whatever said na may chance of going to say, they, they don't want me like that. I was like, I was like, as in, no, I was like, I was literally sitting in the like, auditorium. I was like, huh? Uh, uh, ako? <laughs> oh, shit, it's, it's me. So I didn't expect that all. I didn't, but I'm so happy that I did. Um, mm-hmm. Ginebra, Ginebra, yes, like you mentioned, coming from UP, na ano wala ng nanonood, paro mm-hmm. lang, wala expectation. Napat pat pa ako sa pinaka opposite na situation. <laughs> Lahat ng pinaka most watched team <laughs> expectation is mag champion or manalo every game, mm-hmm. every conference. Champion, that but so very different. It was a different culture for me. Hmm. I think you never. Hindi pa ngayon tasa sila ng champion na how many years nung dumating ka dun, de ba? So talagang the eyes are all on them. You know, matagal, matagal na hindi na gold three. There was that Brownlee's first or second na ba yun? Because the bentong three points ni Brownlee yung against Meralco yung yeah. ta- on top of the key. Was that, that 2016? Was yeah, no, that was the 2017 yun. That was the year before I was drafted. Ah, okay, okay. Kasi 2017 draft ka. So, 2018. Ka pa yeah. Ah, okay, okay. So, yun, this expectations was to repeat, I guess. Kasi nung pumasok ka, or manalo na kasi 2017 governors, the 2018 uh, parang Philippine Cup commissioners. Philippine Cup, hindi ka pinanalo. Bumalik siya ng, ano, I think governors nga. Governors or commissioners. Expectation was manalo kami. Sure. So, I think natalo kaya ito sa San Miguel nung Philippine Cup. So, oh, but then, you know, the fans wanted them to win kasi nung dati parang matatalo na nga rin ng sunod-sunod. I think 2008 tapos the next championship was 2016 na. Parang tagal nila hindi na nalo. Oh, so, oh, it's a whole new thing for Hinebra. <laughs> you know, the fans are disappointed for sure. Pero yun nga, Hinebra, you were one of the crowd favorite pag pinasok ka. I know, like, the crowd roars. Eh. How was that feeling like? I mean, syempre, I know that Coach Tim also said when you retired na parang he was parang nasasayangan siya that he could have played you more. Pero what was the feeling like in that winning organization? Tapos yun, the fans love you pa. You mentioned the expectations and pressure. Pero they love you nga whenever you and you're whenever you're inserted to the game, they want to give you the ball and then shoot a three so that they cheer for you. I don't know. Dude, I, honestly, I don't even know why naging crowd favorite ako eh. Pili ko kasi <laughs> time na yun. Um, the fans kasi of Pineva are crazy. Like, Especially my regulars, I don't know. I mean, they're always there then after practice. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the first time for me to experience something like that. Um, the fans grabbed and supported me. They didn't even care if I played one second or I played 40 minutes or 48 mm-hmm. minutes. Um, and I think because I'm very, you know, ako sa fans. Thanks. I'm I'm the type because I express ng 
thankful ako. So, dahil pag interact ako sa fans, in- in-enjoy ko na habang nandun ako. So, mm-hmm. parang minsan nakipagkulitan ako with the fans, tapos pag nasa mm-hmm. na sila, parang nakipagkulitan pa, pa rin ako. Kasi nagsachant sila eh. Parang mm-hmm. pagtambak na. Oo. Uh-huh. Kasi nga, Jet, Manuel, yeah. Jet, Manuel, gano'n sila. Yeah. Mag-automating sa kanila, nakikita ko si Coach Tim, narinig ni. Parang, asan yun? <laughs> Lakasan yun. Tapos, yun nga, Coach Tim will call me kasi nagsachant na yung fan. So, yun. I think yun yung naging, ano, yun yung naging uh, one of the more enjoyable times uh, when I was playing the BBA. Mm. And being in a Hinebra franchise, there were a lot of great veterans like LA and Coach Tim. So, from from them naman, like specifically the both of them, and I like the way their mentality is every 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 year, every season, mm-hmm. they evolve. Sila, they still re- find ways to get better, even if they're at the best and in their craft. And I see you; you're still close to LA. Pag nag-guess just sa the game, and dami best niya nag-guess, pag naglolokohan pa kayo. So you developed a great bond. So ano yung mga natutunan mo naman na talagang nag-stick sa you from the two greats? Um, from Coach Tim, I think it's ano. Uh, I can't name one. Eh. But he had so many philosophies kasi na beyond basketball. Um, na ang galing, parang ano siya eh. Uh, outside of basketball coaching, he was very, parang, parang sa life coach rin. Na makalaga sa kanya. So it's important for him na the lessons he would teach on the court or during training would also be for life. Ganyan, on how we uphold ourselves, ganyan. So I really learned a lot from him. And so one key thing that I learned from him is the ano, um, value of preparation. Because mm. when you would prepare for certain teams, I mean, it's normal for basketball. But it's so detailed uh, when it comes to preparation. Uh, it's the smallest of details. That's what I, I felt now. Wow. This is different from what I'm used to, and it's normal mm-hmm. uh, for Ginebra. So, yun, that's when I pointed out that he's really so brang, manananalo si coach team, so brang galing niya. Because mm-hmm. very, very meticulous siya sa. As in, when I was starting to learn the system, ah, kala ko talaga dati matalino ako na player. Kaya ko yan, kaya ko, <laughs> kaya ko yung triangle niya, ganyan. Pero there are times where, where I have to cut baseline. I would cut one second too early. Oh. I would cut one second too late. Titigil niya ulit. I would cut um, half a step slow. Titigil niya. Half uh-huh. a step too fast. Ganun siya. Uh-huh. I was like, what? This is crazy. Tapos ang daming mga variations ganyan. So I really value the part. Wow, this is how this guy prepares pala talaga. Sobrang detailed talaga. And mm-hmm. yun. And from LA naman, um, what, what I admired about LA is, is ano eh, his commitment to his craft. I mean, mm. if we have uh, Kobe Bryant uh, stories in our head, oh, yung LA Tenorio for me, uh, I, I, I was roommates with him, ganyan. Yung mga typical, excuse me, leadership stuff, uh, I think it's a given. Eh. Pero yung commitment niya sa game, grabe, bilid na bilid. There's no, there's no wonder to me on how he's still Iron Man ng PBA. Uh-oh. Kasi, Grabe yung disiplina niya and nakita mo talaga na he is a professional eh. He is a professional mm-hmm. basketball player. What I mean by professional, there are PBA players that are magaling and they're pros where they're not professional. This guy is a pro. He would mm-hmm. go up in early ice. He would stretch, warm up, go through his routine. Shooting routine, same thing every single day. During training, wala siyang ano, nakatutok talaga siya, inaalam niya lahat, ginagalaw niya lahat, you, walang jokes or anything. May jokes on the side, pero focus siya. Mm. After training, ice, stretching, tape, be his routine. Mm. After games, may routine. Kung out of town kami, uh, we were roommates, be routine siya. This is what he does, this is what he eats. So, galing, galing, sobrang galing. <laughs> I, I, was, I knew I was dedicated to my craft. But this guy is cool another level. Yun yung na, ano talaga, yun yung LA Tenorio for me. 
Mm, that, those are great, you know, inspiring and motivating stories that you shared. And si Coach Tim nga yung preparation niya, like Conwari nga you mentioned na yung sa very meticulous siya. And nakikita ko nga ngayon like they struggled last bubble, pero yung bago mga postpone yung games. Iba medyo nag-evolve siya in the system and parang yung players, you know, kinakapapan nila pero you know, nakikita mo siya na strict na talaga siya na pagtag a defensive ano ka ano yung defensive laps talagang yeah. nakikita mo siya na sisigawan niya or sa offense like they don't run 100% or like majority triangle na now because they have uh Brownlee and they had Pringle before he got injured so they're trying to run a different variety you know with siguro that could match TNT sila sila yung nag-champion last time pero it's great na he's preparing pa rin and naaral pa rin yung mga games that's why you know I really love coach Tim and It's really great listening to his interviews then. Pero yung sinasabi mong preparation ni Coach Tim and even ni LA, was it difficult for you na, yun nga, may routine ka rin na everyday, pero hindi ka masyadong napapasok kasi, yun, sa UP pa, sa'yo palagi yung bola. So for sure, kung may usage rate, mataas yung usage rate sa UAP, like kung tinatrack nila yun. Pero sa Hinebra, ano, so, sobrang seldom. So how was that adjustment for you? It was hard. I won't lie naman. Uh... As a player, as a force, you want to play. So mm. that's hard for me. Um, diba? I sit on the bench lang. I mean, we're winning. But uh, para nag-kick in rin naman ulit yung, uh, yung discipline ko to what mm. got me at that point. Para I understood naman my situation. I was, a, I was a rookie. I was behind legendary <laughs> players. Scotty, LA, Sol Mercado. Diba? Mm-hmm. So, parang, I didn't expect naman. I didn't, I knew it wasn't in my position. I wasn't in, in a position to demand na you play me, play me, because I'm your first number one pick. Diba? It's, it's never like that. And it's not my personality. So, I knew my position. I was on a championship team now. Shit, I'm not playing, but we're winning. So, I, mm-hmm. I feel like, yeah, you're going home, diba? Unlike mm-hmm. before duty. So, I think my mentality lang, which naturo sa akin rin ng mga veterans ko sa sa Hinebra is you're being paid now. So I, I was a PBA player. You're being paid to show up and to go to work. And part of that work na out of your control is the playing time. So I would show up every day to make sure na pag pinasok ako kahit mm. 20 seconds man yan or 1 minute or 30 minutes ready ako condition mm. ako. I was I had shooting, my skills were tight. I knew all the plays, I knew all the defensive sets, the game mm. plan that once. Kasi na, naturo sa akin um, of course the LA din, ni Mark, kay Iwa. Yun yung mga tinutulungan mm. sa akin na you're a pro now, you're being paid. And you can't demand na palaruin ka kasi the coach is being paid to win. Mm. So you can play you and then <laughs> Diba? So, mm-hmm. uh, I think yun. Yun yung value sa akin na I'll just, I go there, do my routine. I go there early, I lift weights, I do my skill work, we go to team practice, I pay attention to every single detail that coach wants uh, for the game coming up. If you guard this, ganun siya detail eh. So, ang dami niisip. If you guard this guy, this is what you do. If you guard this guy, this is what you do. Mm, may mga tendencies. Oh, oh. tendencies. Mm-hmm. If the guy, if he's holding the ball here in this side, this is what you do. If he's holding the ball here in this side, this is what you do. Parang ganon. Mm. So, yeah, it was hard. I wanted to play. I wanted to play really bad. But I knew my position. I knew I was a pro. I'll be a pro. And that's it for me. So, I go home after. Mm. Yung pagde-decide mo naman na hindi na maglaro sa Hinebra after one, one season, Was that part of your plan talaga before, ano, when you were entering the PBA na, that you wanted to focus on being an engineer? Like, kunwari si Chris Chu, nag-retired rin siya ng maaga and ang lakas niya, like, nung final season niya, final conference niya, dami niya pang nabubugang points and assists. Pero was that similar to your situation or was it also a gradual process on the decision-making when you were in Hinebra already? Uh, well, to go through with the retire- uh, retirement uh, decision for me, Um, it was ano eh, uh, my plans, my personal plans for myself, because I were was always to help my parents in our family. Mm-hmm. 
after I graduated. But in um, that, we I, we wanted to see how far I would go in basketball and to not mm-hmm. have any regrets. So, parang um, having that opportunity na na, na draft ako. Um, it was always gonna be I'll play first um, for a few years, siguro mga three, two, three years, and we'll see from there. But I was always gonna help my parents after. Mm. So um, after that first year, uh, it was complicated. Things happened in between, and mm. I talked. I actually talked to to Chris a lot um, during that time to help me lang with my decision. Uh, and you know, I think at that time the end decision was parang to fast track na my timeline or my life, mm. na weigh both options and seeing na. Um, jump start na ako sa gusto kong gawin for my mm. future, di ba? Ito na investment ko. I have no regrets. I played um, PBA basketball. I was a PBA champion. I learned so much and I worked my ass off. Na wala ako regret na hindi ko ginawa yung best ko. So, yun. It was a gradual. Uh, I really thought about it. muni muni ako for so many, for like two mm. months. Ganyan. Kasi hirap rin to leave basketball after spending my mm. whole life. And then eventually, you know, I think the decision was hard, but it was one of the more sure decisions that I ever was or ever had in my life. Hmm. And yun nga, sinasabi mo na it took a lot of time and you know effort to decide. Pero parang namiss mo kagad yung sports kasi naging analyst ka kagad yata sa NCA. <laughs> and, and, and you had a lot of ventures today in terms of covering sports and I don't know how the year yung 2019 na yata yun, nag-start yeah. na hagad. So how, what did how did you move on to that uh venture uh, sorry so that yeah to that part of your life kagad and it's a new venture that you had and you're flourishing in it also. Syempre alam ko yung parang mindset mo same lang na nag-extra work ka rin siguro and inaaral mo yung mga kailangan gawin for your media work. Pero paano naman nag-transition yun like Diego Dario also doing the similar thing. Um, but I give thanks to ano, Ito Mix, uh, Miko Hadili. Uh, mm. He was he's actually still one of my mentors now. Um, he was the one who gave me the chance. He started me with CNN, and then when he was there, then he went to ABS-CBN. He brought me with him. Uh, and then he gave me the opportunities na, and it was easy. It was easier for me because uh one i was really content with my decision when i made the decision to retire no looking back like i didn't regret anything so uh, it was easier for me to move on and still be connected to the sport so i still love basketball i still do to this day it's just a different form of love for me and mm. i don't see tito mix parang gave me the opportunity to still be connected to the game so moving to that i know enjoy i really enjoy it i really i'm still growing in it something I'm passionate about. Um, it's an opportunity that I grabbed kagad nung uh, in-offer lang sa akin. Nag-audition pa nga ako dun sa for NCAA that time eh, for college hoops. Oh, so, uh, yun. I just made the most of the opportunities na presented itself to me. And now, then I'm happy. Ay, uh-huh. yeah, you, na yun, and I still enjoy talaga. I enjoy this uh, new part of my life. Mm. And as an analyst, naman, or like a host, sino yung mga parang you the people that you look up to, whether local, like siguro si Miko Halili nga yung local, pero like siguro foreign, like panong style yung tinatry mo tingnan when you try to analyze games. Like sa ESPN, si Jeff Van Gundy and Mark Jackson magaling. Pero si Doris Burke, like when I listen to them, may manatututulan ako every game, yeah. even if I listen to like 100 or 1,000 games of them already. So ikaw naman, what's yours? <laughs> Uh, ako, yeah, my idol ko yun, yes. Sakto, actually, those two. I watch a lot of their games. Jeff Van Gogh is Mark Jackson. Uh, Reggie mm-hmm. Miller, I enjoy. Chris Weber, oh, yeah, I enjoy. Really. Yeah, Chris Weber, I don't. I don't like Chris. Uh, <laughs> Me also. Yeah, it's not my type. But, yeah, yeah so insight kasi ex-player siya. Eh. Mm-hmm. So, yun. But, um, ayun, I think I enjoy the most. Si Reggie, si Mark Jackson, tsaka si Jeff Van Gogh. Mm-hmm. And from their style, ano yung mga napupulot mo naman that you could apply from your? Siyempre, like, you still want to have your own. Yeah, yeah. Yung nga yung sasanam sa akin dito, Mix, eh. Parang, um, don't be caught up in trying to be someone na in-idolize mo, especially in the media world. 
yung mga sinasabi nila, ganyan, nasasabihin mo. Uh, at may, yung mga mentors, I have to shout out my mentors here na local. Si, um, si Boom, tsaka si, ano, si Boom, Tito Mix, and si uh, Paolo, Del, uh, Paolo Del Rosario. So, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, these guys help me a lot talaga. Um, but, yung mga napupulot, parang it's more on how to engage the fans. When you're doing media kasi, it's, I learned na I'm not just saying what I see. It's just, it's more of giving a product na like you guys or us when you watch. Yung nga, yung nga, you just mentioned, you learn so much, you learn so much. Parang, yun, yung ganun feedback, yung ganun engagement na magulo kasi ako eh, like makulit ako when I cover. So, yun yung mm-hmm. engagement. Gusto ko. And at the same time, uh, I'm trying to use my my experience as a, a pro player to bring to ano, the table. So yeah, yun yung natutunan ko sa kanila. Mm. Do you ano, plan naman to continue it? Like for the long term, kahit engineer ka, like it's always going to be on the side to help you, um, you know, st- still keep in touch with whatever's happening in sports here in the Philippines? Yeah, do it for sure. I'm going to riding this wave uh i've uh i say i'm the type when there are opportunities that present themselves to you you take them eh. you take you be wise about it um mm. but you take them because opportunities are coming na nga, eh. so i'm really whatever you know as much as as long as they want to get me i'm always gonna be able to cover them I cover pba oh. uab uh dito, the game and be whatever whatever i'm always down to do it oh like for me it's really something i, I don't know i like doing like podcasting you know because i know what's going on in the athletes so it's just training then or like practice because i want to be also like yung mga ganyan sa sports media in the future mm-hmm. like when i graduate or something yeah why not yeah 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 yung parang gusto ko mangyari i mean nung bata parang basketball player eh too small i'm not that good so you know parang media para matuloy pa din yung passion that's something i'd want to do also so yeah that's why i started a podcast it's like in connection to that yeah you it's good good uh, yeah I'll, i'll root for you sana magsama yeah, pa tayo ah uh, sorry sana magsama pa tayo who knows oh di di ka naman di ka naman magre-retire sa kapag to ko oh hangga to oh, but <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, hindi pa naman, hindi pa. So in the final portion of the interview lang naman, these are like questions that I ask my other guests din. And yung isa is pretty sure alam mo dahil avid NBA fan ka nga and you're, you write for NBA.com and nung bubble si LeBron, diba, they were very vocal about what uh, what was occurring in their country with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and everything. And pati sa elections, they were very vocal on teaching people, educating people on the platforms of the candidates, ganun. And dito sa Philippines, parang in my opinion, parang nagsistart pa lang tayo na maging vocal yung athletes. Like, I see them retweeting. I, see, I don't know sino yung mga athletes na nagre-retweet, but mag- I follow a lot of people kasi on IG. Yung, yung bago mag-deadline for this, yung registration. Yeah. yeah, registration. They were telling people to, yeah, to vote. Register. Uh, yeah, yeah, register to vote. Like telling them like the step by step process and stuff. So for you, is it okay or is it advisable for athletes to be um, connected with social and political issues and them expressing their views like in media or social media? You know, for me, I would, I know, I would encourage it, naman. Um, very sensitive. I think it's because we're starting or it's new, but very sense. People are very sensitive, especially Pinoy. You know, are very sensitive mm-hmm. to social media. But my whole idea kasi, for athletes that have a platform is to use their platform to convey what message they want to convey. Mm-hmm. It's just the same as you using your platform, whatever, how big or how small, to convey a message you want to convey. Mm-hmm. Ngayon, it's up, uh, what I hate lang are haters. I hate haters. <laughs> Like mm. yung mga success haters. To, mm. to, parang, it's different kasi to contest something educationally. But uh, there's a lot of haters lang on social media that just do it for fun. Because mm. when these people with platforms and have a following convey a message or opinion that they want, political, 
or what they agree, you agree or not. It's up to the viewers naman or the followers to follow them or not. Do you know how they think na eh? Follow mo na lang or hindi. Pero kung mo naman husga ng isang tao, di ba? Hmm. See what their opinion is. So I would, I am for it. Uh, I support it. Ako personally, I'm very ap- uh, apolitical when it comes hmm. to social media. Um, just because I'm not that type of person in, yeah. in general to talk about political uh, issues in public. It's just me. Mm. So mm. That's, that's my message. Siguro. So yeah. don't follow me if you want to see political stuff. Diba? Parang yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. Like, yung mga athletes naman are very active. Siyempre, dapat, you know, knowledgeable sila and may mga matutunan yung mga followers nila to them. Pero, you know, you could respect the opinion of others or their decision if they don't really want to elaborate on yeah, or yeah. expound on what they believe in. I mean, they could keep it to themselves. But it's great then for the ones that educate. They should know that it's hard because when there are fake news, when you're in the red, you're not going to be able to educate yourself. Yes, you're not going to be able to post it. Educate yourself before you, right? You just look like a fool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for sure. So the other question is, if you had opportunity to have dinner with five people, dead or alive, Sino dadalhin mo? Okay, so number one would probably be Kobe Bryant. Um, I'm a golfer now, so I choose Tiger wow. Woods also. Hmm. Um, my grandfather, yung dad of my dad, hmm. uh, yung tatang, eh, si tatang, because I didn't really get to talk to him that much before. Hmm. Uh, so I'd want him Si nanay, so that's the mom of my mom. Hmm. So those two grandparents, because I think uh, I would, I'd want to have dinner or lunch with them. And the hmm. last one, hmm, dead or alive, that I'd want to talk to. I'm juggling a few names in my head now. <laughs> for my fifth pick. <laughs> Para fantasy draft. <laughs> oh, my. for my fifth pick, probably. Um, probably Jordan Peterson. I probably want to talk to him. He's a uh, okay. very philosophical. <laughs> uh, so for the final question, it's like I don't know the one I mentioned earlier that I just invite people through social media. And I've invited a good amount of basketball players, and even UP like Diego Dario. I've invited him, and a lot of Ateneo and La Salle players. Then and for you, who are the ones you suggest? Mo na pwede kong invite here on the DVD show. I mean, I've invited the, some people, so you could even if I haven't invited them, you can mention uh, them. Na man, and who are the mga you know good stories, great, great person to talk to? Who would you say? Di naman college, no? Any talaga, any athlete. Yeah, any athlete nga kahit ibang sports tinatakaw ko nga. Well, I said EJ Obiena kanina. Di ba? So yeah, he's yeah, probably yeah. one of the guys I'd want to ask. Um, uh, sino kaya pwede? Gusto ko yung mga may interesting stories. Yeah, I think EJ Obiena would be my, you know. The usual siguro sila Carlos Yulo. Mm-hmm. And I, I like Olympians, eh. Iba yung journeys nila, eh. Carlos Yulo, si Aydelin, of course, but that's kind of far cry. Right? Uh, <laughs> but who knows, diba? Yeah. yeah I, think, I think these personalities would be great to invite. Mm. Oh, yeah, si Javi pala. I had him na rin. Javi Gomez dali. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my boy. That's my yeah. rookie right there. Yeah, Coach Bo pala. He's my daughter the UP people I've had na. Yeah, uh, uh, okay. Javi. Yeah, dami na ring UP that I've, that I've, 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 you know, invited here. So yun, and yun. Thank you again, Jet. That's all the time we had. Thank you again Hi, for joining thanks, me here. Thanks for having me. I really enjoyed. Thank you. Uh, good luck with your show, and more power to you. Yeah, yun. I said ko na sana piyad final message, pero okay na rin. You already said it. Uh, final message to who? To you? No, to anyone. Oh, to me or to the viewers. Hi. Uh, uh, so. Final message, thanks for everyone, all the viewers that are watching the DVD show. Keep supporting my boy, DVD. Uh, <laughs> and Sigur, whoever gave, gave some time to listen to my story, thanks for that. Uh, 
and I'm excited to see what the show has in store. Pa. Sige, sige. So is it okay if we take a picture before you go? Oh yeah, for sure, bro. Sige, I'll take it na lang here. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, thank you so much again, Jet, and stay safe. Sure,